Okay, so Sri Lanka. To Sri Lanka, uh, we come this year in December. I just uh, remind you quickly that you can write any questions if you wish. Uh, and I will check from time to time if there is anything I can answer. So even if you have uh, questions, general questions to the project, I'm more than happy to answer. Um, but yeah, I slowly move uh, toward Sri Lanka. Okay, good. I hope that some people are still with us um, to finally uh, listen about this really wonderful small country. Um, which we actually, uh, which we actually visited um, after one year of being in Europe. So it was the longest break we had in travel, um, and we already got used to some kind of things. Not even comfort, but more like having control of our schedule or having even any schedule, having calendar. Uh, you know, like this kind of things which in travel, when you travel, especially staying always with local people, um, doesn't really, doesn't really work. So we went to Sri Lanka, uh, quite tired after actually uh, almost uh, three weeks of doing trainings. And we were hosted there by Home Tree Coworking. If I may give you some tip, if any of you would like to um, try to travel as we do, so staying with local people based on exchange, on Sri Lanka and India, the best for that are co-working spaces. They have really entrepreneurial uh, approach and they are very happy to host you, especially because very often they have already some kind of um, accommodation uh, prepared for people. And in exchange, we were doing for them presentation, we were doing for them a workshop, and we consult a little bit even individual change makers to network them with other people all over the world and also get to know their own stories, actually. Of course, meanwhile, we were trying to visit Colombo itself. Uh, and Colombo is probably the less interesting part of Sri Lanka, but still good to stay for one or two days. Uh, just to see how the big city may look like. There is still a lot of culture to discover. Sri Lanka is actually a very good beginning if somebody is thinking to go to India, because it's not as extreme as India, um, but still you can already have touch of a little bit different uh, culture, different approach, a little bit of this exotic, you would say, um, experience. But yet you don't have to care that much how do you, what do you wear, which for example in, in India is a little bit of the issue because you have to cover more or you have to be more careful about the social uh, things and so on and so on. In Sri Lanka instead um, you can go and nobody will really stop you. And uh, we went to Colombo mostly to discover local uh, change makers and one of them was Good Market. Uh, actually, everybody told us about good markets. So from the very first moment, everybody say, hey, go to good market if you are uh, on Saturday here. Uh, unfortunately, we were not on Saturday there. But if you are in Colombo on Saturday, you definitely have to visit Saturday market, which sells all the kind of products and services. And all of them are responsible, uh, ecological and so on and so on. But if you are not there it's Saturday, they also have small shop and restaurant with very good food. When again, you can buy uh, ecological and socially responsible product like peanut butter. You know, Andrea is addicted uh, to peanut butter. But there are so many, many other things. And then from Colombo, we decided to go south and we always uh, try to go, you know, with the most local transport possible. So we took trains and Sri Lanka is very famous from its trains because they pass many tea, um, tea plantations. But unfortunately, they're also very, very crowdy and it's not easy to book a place in them um, because a lot of traveling agencies, they've actually buy the place which are possible to book before and then they sell it for a much more expensive price. And anyway, this is not exactly the same experience as you can see here on this photo being completely, uh, you know, in the middle of the crowd for four or five hours. And, you know, the view from this train may be even nice, but as you see, windows are quite low, so you cannot see it uh, when you stand in this crowd. But it's still worth to take it and to go south to the most beautiful beaches. And there also we had our first couch surfing experience. So couch surfing is working quite well on Sri Lanka. Um, 
but we were not working that well with car surfing, I have to say. So that was still our first days of being there. And uh, we still had this very big need of control, of planning, of knowing what will happen. Um, and our car surfer, our host, definitely didn't have this approach. So, for example, he didn't appear the hour we supposed to meet and then he came, but we were not really talking too much in the evening. He just said, OK, you can use the kitchen. But then we saw that they stopped eating when we came and we felt a little bit uncomfortable. So much that next day we decided to go away, although we planned to stay originally for two nights. But in the morning at the end, he really approached us. We had even some breakfast and lunch together. And he said, yeah, 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 I show you all the beaches around. Just wait for my friends. He's coming in 15 minutes with another bicycle. So you can go with two bicycles. With two, not bicycles, but motorbikes. And we were waiting. And this 15 minutes at the end was five hours. Um, which, you know, make, made me uh, really nervous, um, completely unnecessary, because at the end, that was a really nice time when we could see how the village in Sri Lanka looked like. And we discovered a lot of things. For example, uh, we met this plant. So now it's a little bit um, riddled for you. So let's see who can recognize what is this plant. I give you a few seconds to think about that and please write in the comments so i will also check the comment i will check if there are any questions and please try to guess what it is on the photo and write in the comment let's see who will be able to guess that i will give you some tips um to make it uh easier so who didn't guess yet uh, can try so the the tip is that is actually the kind of spice uh, which we use very often in our cuisine is used a lot in uh, uh, spaghetti carbonara to give some italian accent to that And well, it's black and you have the last seconds to answer, then I actually will tell you. OK, yes, good. Well, it's not coffee, <laughs> but that was good try. But it's pepper. Very good. It's pepper. Right. Really nice. Uh, of course, this green thing is a pepper, which then became uh, the black spice. And I have for you one more. So what is this? It is also a spice. And but this kind of spice we rather use with sweets, I would say. And um, and actually, uh, to, as a spice, we use the bark of this tree, which I had no idea before I came to Sri Lanka. So last, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Last, uh, last few seconds to check the other one. Well, I see that um, you need also some photo of uh, co uh, some photo of coffee. Actually, we in um, giving you more time to guess, I tell you that in our YouTube, you have co you have small movie about coffee production. So you can see exactly how the coffee pan look like. Well, it's not bay leaf. Any other guess? Yes, this is cinnamon. Bravo. Good. That's exactly the cinnamon, how it uh, look like. So cinnamon is this bark brown uh, part. Okay, so that's what we discovered finally with our car surfer after being a little bit more patient. But then at the end, we spent a few days alone um, on the beach. We don't usually sleep in hostels, but I have to say that in Sri Lanka, it happened much more often than usually. A little bit because, I mean, they are cheap, comfortable, and they are everywhere. But also, we really needed time to get used to this kind of traveling, which is not easy. It's uh, it's not easy to be always with local people, to depend on them, to be vulnerable toward what world can bring you. So we needed a little bit of break uh, for that. So we just took two, three days on the beach alone. And as you can see on this photo, it's one of my favorite. Uh, it's a photo which will never happen in India, for example. So you have people from basically three different back uh, cultural backgrounds. You have Europeans uh, in swimming suits. 
Then you have muslin people completely covered, only with uh, feet, um, you know, to put them in the water, uncovered. And then there are two young uh, Hindu representatives who are somewhere in between. So they are not covered We actually traveled with somebody, uh, with Sanka, which we also met in Portugal, in the same place uh, we met with Andrea. Um, and it's always interesting experience, you know, because you have to find out what you want and adjust to it and maybe you'll discover something you would never do alone. We visited a little bit Sri Lanka around together and um, one of the best adventures we had together was actually uh, on the tea farm. So we met um, another card surfer um, who, who, who occurs to be an owner of a tea farm. And basically they were kind of having holiday and uh, hosting a lot of couch surfers. I think we meet seven or eight people being there and just showing them tea production. But uh, in the evening also playing music together. So I also try to play some Sri Lankan drums and singing and, you know, having this super uh, intensive cultural experience. It was already much better than first time. First of all, because they were much more used to host people. Our previous card surfer, we were their second guest, but also we kind of relaxed and let things go and start to appreciate what the what the experience um, what experience is given to us. In this moment, I wanted to play a movie for you, but I will not do it. Um, as uh, well, I also had to change computer; it's not prepared here. But uh, this is very good excuse for you to go out to our YouTube channel, which we I will send um, I will put the link in the comment and please please subscribe it so then we can have a nice name, exchange the world, and not this like you know link which nobody can remember. But instead of movie, which you can uh, show, you can see there how the tea production in Sri Lanka look like and coffee. So you know how the coffee plant look like. I will just share with you a few interesting things which we got to know from uh, Michael. Just to tell you what I will tell you now about tea production. It's not general true about all the tea farm in Sri Lanka. It's true only for Michael's farm and it's based on his words. Um, so yeah, it, it may not apply, especially to massive production. In this case, they are still working in quite traditional way. And um, their workers, uh, they live also in the farm. So here you can see children of workers and the houses which they actually uh, live in. They, they are there since generations. So very often children, after a while, they also take over the work of their parents. They also have access to school there. Um, although it has to be said that they are not that happy to go to the school, um, but that's, uh, you know, another story. Coming back to adults, so women, women are most responsible for collecting coffee leaves. As you can see in the photo here, they have these big bags on their, on their head and then with both hands they are able to collect um, tea leaves. From interesting things, basically white, green and black coffee, uh, sorry, tea, they are coming from exactly the same plant, but you collect different kind of leaves. So, you know, leaves on the top are different type of tea. Then if you go a little bit lower, it's different type of tea and so on. But the plant is always the same. And there is no specific season for tea. So you can collect it actually through all the year. And you need 10 to 14 days to have leaves to grow again. So basically in two weeks, you can start to collect again. And as for women, they start to work seven in the morning and they work till half past three, collecting those tea. They have a tea break or coffee break around 10 and lunch break and around 12. And according to the law in Sri Lanka, they should collect around 25 uh, kilo of uh, tea per day. But in Michael's case, if they collect more than 20, they already have extra bonus. So let's say that their daily limit is a little bit lower. Speaking about men, they are more responsible for cleaning the land. So they remove weeds and they make it, uh, they make it uh, clean. And in their, ca their case, they also are paid uh, from, for working from seven to half past three, but then if they want, they can also take some extra job in the afternoon, which they will be paid more for. Okay, when they uh, collect the tea, twice a day they are bringing it to factory, which you see now in the photo. So before lunch break and before finishing the job, they are collecting all the coffee leaves uh, in the factory. This is quite old factory, so they still operate in very traditional way with old machines, which supposed to also keep better taste of uh, tea. 
So what you do first is to bring all the tea leaves on the first floor when it's uh, you dry them for the first round. So it's, there is this guy which just move um, move leaves so they dry faster, and this machine which is like you know producing the hot air. And then you move all the leaves which are actually dry and you put them in kind of slide. So now we are already in the ground floor and in kind of slide all this uh, um, kind of dry uh, leaves go to machine which cut them into small, uh, small pieces. Once they are cut, you leave them for a while for fermenting. And then they basically go from very, very different machines, um, which, well, first of all, you dry them again, and then you go through different machines which separate them in size. There's all the room, which serves only to separate, uh, you know, big uh, pieces of leaves from, from small or from powder, uh, because they will be just sell as a different kind of product. And here you have already boxes with uh, ready tea. From interesting things, they also they are not allowed to sell the tea directly, so there is always kind of auction. You you sell it to um, to to people. Okay, that was about tea from Michael uh, Farm. If you have any questions to that, please write to me. And now I have next uh, riddle for you. That would be the last plant riddle. So the question is, what is this tree about? And I guess from tree is very difficult to guess. So I show you from closer. Okay, it's not very, very, very visible, but we speak about those small things. And it's again kind of spice. And it's growing on the huge tree, which was very surprising for us. And again, I give you a few seconds to guess what it is. It's not a coffee. And you use it, well, you use it, for example, for uh, hot wine. When you, you, I know that it's summer already, but in the winter you can put it hot wine. There's a lot of it around during Christmas time, for example. A few more seconds to guess what it is. Okay, there's not so many people who want to guess, so I tell you, uh, you call them cloves in English, right? They are cloves, you know, these very small things, which you put in your hot wine, and they are growing in those huge trees. Can you imagine that? It's actually very difficult to collect them, and they're usually teenager boys who are specialized in like climbing those trees and getting them down. Okay, and we go further this time for the volunteering project. So actually our dream was to volunteer in tea farm, but uh, we couldn't find any volunteering project. So we ended up, um, well, still in the kind of farm, but it, let's say more the forest farm, um, where we actually spent 10 days. Um, and it's called uh, Analog Forestry, created by the guy who, uh, I will not even try to pronounce his name, but you can see it on the screen and he's now writing on the board. And basically his concept was to create analogous uh, forest to the original ones. Um, so he was finding the forest which was uh, before in this region and he would try to replicate it. So, so choosing different kind of trees which would be similar to those who were there before. Similar but not necessarily the same. So he was, for example, uh, observing the shape of leaves, how high uh, are the trees, and trying to find trees which have similar um, feature, but maybe they have a little bit different functions. So maybe instead of tree which served for wood, he would find some tree which served for fruits. But basically he was building forest in, uh, in this way. And we were volunteering there, of course, mostly in the forest. So planting small trees or watering them or cleaning the paths from the leaves. This is never ending task. Being in the forest, enjoying time, but also spending some time in this beautiful canteen, you know, place you could eat, you, can't, uh, you could speak and discuss about life. We spend a lot of time doing that. And speaking about food, I have to tell you, Seriously, that Sri Lankan food is definitely one of the best food we ever tried. It's also one of the most spicy food we ever tried. 
Although I have to say that in this competition, probably Thailand is still on the first place. But definitely, uh, if you're still not convinced to go to Sri Lanka, just look at these pictures. This is uh, the food is definitely the reason um, to go there. And speaking about food, I have one more riddle. This time it would be animal riddle for you. Uh, well, this is, uh, uh, but it would be not about what is this animal, uh, but what this animal is actually doing. So the question is what um, what this animal is doing. And to make it easier, I tell you that actually you have to guess what is this machine for? What people in Sri Lanka use this machine for? Okay, meanwhile, I check also your questions when you can think what is this machine for. Yes, I can give you contact to Couchsurfer from Tea Plantation. I will do it our, after our presentation. Oh my gosh, it's so nice to see people, uh, yeah, which we haven't seen from ages. It's so nice to know that you're with us. And I'm talking now so you can actually write your answer about this machine. The small tip is that you have, uh, like, if you just look behind animal, I mean, I think you will guess what this machine is for. Oh, oh my gosh, we even have people who actually, for whom we volunteered there. <laughs> well, really nice to see you then. <laughs> and I mean, you cannot guess what is this machine for because it's your machine, right? <laughs> so congratulations to all others, <laughs> which um, we didn't know that. So yes, it's coconut grater. So you basically are scrub it's for scrapping elephant, uh, elephants. Oh my gosh coconuts so you put the coconut half of coconut and you know you turn it around and then you have those small pieces of coconut which you can put everywhere and uh, and of course the, the animal is just eating rest of it because it's the best the best ever uh, well being um, uh, being in Palipola in uh, volunteering there we also finally had could have a good coffee unfortunately you know as you see this um, uh, this gas thing was a little bit too big for the real mocha so we had to be a little bit uh, inventive to to manage with that but we had also very good coffee and and big thanks uh, also to those who listened to us and made it possible we had panettone which is typical italian cake for christmas because actually we spent christmas there very untypical christmas in the you know rainforest and sun but at least italian cake was there during our day off we also had, um, had occasion to vi visit ella which is one of the most touristic places. um it's really nice but uh, I have to say that there are so many beautiful places uh, in Sri Lanka that there is no need to go to this one particular place. And all the tourist guides, they will tell you, take the train from Ella to Kandy or actually from Kandy to Ella. And well, I suppose it's a nice train. I don't know, because we stand there for six hours and didn't see too much. It was uh, yeah, very crowded train and I can, ju can just tell you that all the Sri Lankan trains are really nice and there is no need to really take this particular one. But definitely visiting, you know, um, visiting tea plantation, trying to sit is something I, I recommend. We were quite lucky because it was very foggy day, so not that many people around because usually um, there is quite a lot. It's one of the view, tea plantations everywhere. This is a little bit outside of Ella where we try to catch a bus to actually come back to our volunteering project. And the last day uh, in Sri Lanka, we came back south a bit for New Year's Eve um, to winter, yeah, to surf. So for Andrea, it was to come back surfing after a few years of not doing it. For me, it was first time trying to do it. And as you may see on this photo, I was not very successful. There's my hand, you know, <laughs> from the water uh, trying to survive. Um, but definitely, um, well, it's all worth. I mean, also Sri Lanka is one of the best places to go to win uh, to surf. It's one of the best places to go to see how the tea is produced. It's one of the best places to go and volunteer. And um, definitely, we can also share contact to the place we volunteer for. And before I finish and we'll check out uh, what are your questions, I want to tell you about one more project, which we actually met just uh, in the last day of our being in Sri Lanka, and it's called Eco Maximus. 
Um, it's funny because it, at the beginning we were not really able to contact with them. We got to know about them from one of the participants of our workshops. Basically, she's from Spain and told us when she was in Poland, told us about Sri Lankan project. So we really um, sent them a million messages saying, hey, you have to meet with us. And finally, the last day we managed. And um, well, it's a project of um, producing paper from elephant poo. So we basically take a sheet of elephant um, and produce paper from it instead of cutting trees. So it really helps uh, to prevent deforestation. And as you can see, it's very, very beautiful. Um, well, what most people do with their notebooks um, is to actually smell them. And we can tell you that, um, well, they smell uh, normally there is no elephant smell and if, if you will stand i can show them also my notebook which is just uh, standing there because i as i got one as a gift and they be it became my diary so i can show you um well i cannot be the best example of if it smell or not because as some of you may know i don't feel smells but andrea say it doesn't smell and it's very beautiful and again it protect actually uh trees and make um it's my absolutely from like recyclable uh, paper. We actually publish their story like this is the last story uh, on our website. So if you want to know more, you can always go for the exchange the world .info. I will show you all the contacts in one second. And this interview with the owner again, I will not even try to pronounce the name. I'm sorry, uh, is there so you can have a look and uh, read more. And there's also contact to them if you would like to contact uh, them directly. Okay, so now, um, now it's time for questions and for me to read your comments because I see that there is some, uh, you know, there is uh, a lot of conversation. If you see that there is written Anna Książek Plank, it's not me because I cannot write and speak, but it's uh, Andrea who used my computer. Um, let me see first uh, your comments. So this is also a very good time for you to ask questions. And a very unique opportunity that I answer them immediately. Andrea is just opposite me. So if you want to know his version uh, or you have questions to him directly, I will ask him to come. And yes, um, you can see the, the contact to Bellipola where we actually volunteer. So if anybody is interested, please check the comments um, and you can you can directly speak with them as you already see who is that and definitely recommend it as volunteering place or just place to visit and stay because actually they also offer accommodation. So contact them definitely if you are in Sri Lanka, especially around Ella. And again, if you have any questions, please ask them and I will come back to the previous presentation to share with you our contacts. Here we go. Here we go. So pay attention only to the first website, which is exchangetheworld.info. This is where you will find more stories, um, more photos, more information about us. Uh, Facebook, I guess you know already because this is where we have our uh, live. If you don't yet follow us on Instagram, I'm now really YouTuber and Instagrammer since few weeks. Um, so you can support us by following, especially YouTube. I need 100 subscribers, so please go there. I will send you the link in the comments. And there is contact to us. If you have any questions, suggestions, uh, you can contact us also by email or WhatsApp. And whenever we have internet, we can answer. Okay, so there's a question if, uh, if anyone can uh, join us in our travel. Um, well, it didn't happen so far, as I told you, besides, uh, besides Senka, who was the first one. And, uh, well, usually we don't really travel with other people, uh, simply because like hitchhiking or couch surfing is a little bit more difficult also with free people as we experience it. Well, who knows, you know, um, we are always open for new adventures. So, um, we, we never say no, um, but it's, always a little bit more difficult to organize. Although there are some people who travel the way we do, and I know that they take people as uh, even as a business uh, with them. Maybe we have to explore that as well. But you know, if you are in part of the world we are, definitely we can meet for coffee and then maybe go somewhere together as well. And speaking about that, that part of the world we are now uh, is Italy, <laughs> which is probably not the first uh, place people think to go. 
Um, but as it was mentioned before, we we were actually in India. Uh, oh my gosh, it was two months ago, two months ago already, I cannot believe that. So two months ago, we were a little bit forced uh, to, um, to leave India and come back to Italy. There is more information about that on our blog as well, if you want to say, if you want to know more about our Corona adventures. And we have next question, which is what is your next destination and next project? That's a very good question. Well, I think that uh, as all of us, we face this challenge that the world is like kind of unpredictable right now. <laughs> but our plan is, um, well, because we are in Italy now and um, we want to explore Italy more also because we don't know exactly when the other borders will be open. So our plan is to go to south of Italy, to Puglia and uh, go through it also walking. Actually, walking is one of our favorite way of traveling. We did a lot of Camino de Santiago and those kind of things. So we hope to discover South of Italy walking and also start to do presentations and workshops as we usually do on the way. Then, um, then we actually have a few trainings to do in Europe. So we got a few grants from Erasmus Plus to organize training about climate change, about women empowerment, about greenwashing, social entrepreneurship. So whenever the European borders would be open, we will invite um, all people interested to those kind of international training. And once this is done, we will probably hit the road again. That's our big dream. We would love to come back to to India, especially because we we didn't do everything we planned. And if we are close to India, why not to Sri Lanka, which we are really in love with? But this has to come uh, later when you know world would be a little bit more open. And speaking about this very very close plans, um, as we are now, you know, trying to conquer the internet. Um, actually, next week we will have uh, next presentations. Next week is time for Polish presentations. So on Tuesday we will uh, speak about South India, but in Polish. But also we will have presentation on Monday and um, Thursday. On Monday it would be in a group called Spotkania Podgórznicze Online. Is uh, is led by Solisci and then we will speak about Georgia because Georgia is now opening for tourists. Um, so they invite us to share our experience from Georgia. And on Thursday we will be part of um, a festival where there will be many travelers. I will also give you the link in comments and you can follow our fan page to know more. And next English live would be in two weeks the same time, the same place, hopefully without uh, technical problems. We will speak about South of India. Okay, you have the last chance to ask questions uh, if you want me to answer live. Um, if you have more questions later, you can also ask them and we will, uh, we will write you the answer as a comment or as a post. Even in our fan page, we have this option, ask a question, and we promise to ask any question which you ask. Uh, although, you know, with writing, it takes us more time as if all our materials are Polish, English and Italian. But if you ask now, uh, in life, you will receive the answer immediately. So you have the last chance to ask me the question. And if there would be no more question, I will thank you all for being with us, especially, you know, despite all these technical uh, difficulties, which I'm again apologize a lot for. I'm really, really grateful also our friends from Sri Lanka who uh, who join us, uh, who hosted us first and now join us because it's really nice that, you know, you are still thinking about us and hope to get um, in touch again. And again, if any of you have questions, you have our contacts. I will finish for today wishing you a very good evening and thanking again for being with us.